Hi, everybody. I am going to do a brief demonstration on uh, copper reposé, and we're going to be applying it to the theme of the Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos. And the, the end result is going to be a triptych, an altarpiece triptych, where we have three pieces that are going to connect to each other to make a folded altarpiece that will be then submitted to the college for the festival that's going to be coming up at the end of the month. Um, so I've given each of you a set of uh, copper pieces that um, gives you essentially all the materials you need to do this assignment. And one of them I did do the scoring on first, but let me just give you a quick back background on the process. So the process is very old. It goes back to ancient Mycenae, and it's the idea of bending or folding metal, pushing metal, in order to strengthen it, because you'll notice that the copper that I give you that's just been milled and it's just a flat piece is pretty weak and uh, thin. But upon working it, when you add lines and push into it, it becomes stronger and stronger. So this is called putting a simple line in the copper is called scoring. And when you score into the copper, you've immediately strengthened it because you've pushed into the, the, the fibers or the mesh of the metal and it's become organized. So let me just show you. Uh, you're just going to use a straight edge to inscribe into the into the copper, and what that does, uh, I've given you an example on one of them already. So you're going to follow that example, but I'm going to do it right here, right now. So I, I like using a ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are perfect for this process because it has that rolling tip. You'll end up using a, a fingernail polish to remove the, the ink that gets put onto it. Or I also just save old ballpoint pens that don't have any ink in them, and they, they, look, they work great for this process. Um, I also like retractable pens, ones that, especially if they're plastic, that have the uh, tip that retracts, because then you have a surface that you can also use to push out. So I, I like to have both. And you'll notice I, I put some tape on this because it gets kind of hard pushing on it. So you end up with bad calluses on your hand and stuff like that. So I tend to try to keep it soft so that my hand doesn't get uh, too sore <laughs> as I get older. I've noticed that's become an issue. Um, so, so what you're gonna do is you, you inscribe, you push into, you incise uh, four lines and then you're gonna flip it over, okay? This is actually the front, all right? This will be the back, this will be the front. So what I end up doing is writing, I'll write front that way I have an idea so I don't get confused later, okay? And then I'm going to go next to each line on the front using the straight edge again. So I'm, I'm lining up my straight edge right next to the line I drew but not on it. And I'm going to draw on either side of that initial line. And that what that does is, again, it, it adds to the strength of the piece. And it makes a format within that area. So, so you're just going to take a little bit of time and prepare all of the pieces the way I'm doing this right now before you actually start tooling on them. And again, I do this when I work with my regular my regular stuff. I, I will pre-do pre a lot of this stuff so it's ready to go. And then I, I don't have to think about it for when I'm actually tooling. So this doesn't take very long to do. After I get that front all uh, double-sided, I'm going to flip it over one more time onto the back. And I'm going to put one more set of lines on the inside uh, to push out the format towards the, the front, okay, or towards the viewer, depending on how you want to look at it. So it's a matter of flipping it back and forth to get the relief. We're, we're making a piece with relief. And so that's your format. That's how you're going to start, okay? Then what I suggest doing is with a piece of paper the same size as the format, make your sketches of what you want to do. And then you can do two things. You can freehand it, which is what I generally do, or you can take the piece and actually tape it onto the copper and then re redraw it, okay? So I'm just going to make a, a strange, I don't know, just a flower design. If you research the history of Day of the Dead, you're going to find there's some icon, there's some iconography that's used typical to the um, to the work that's made. Flowers tend to be, especially like marigolds, uh, tend to be utilized a lot. Um, of course, the sugar skull is also a very popular theme in Day of the Dead's uh, um, festivals and stuff. So a skull that's highly decorative uh, is perfect for this, this uh, this piece. 
Um, I also, I did some sort of uh, abstract things as well. So like these are some, uh, this is my symbolic wind. Uh, so yeah, it's up to you how you want to decorate your, your triptych. A triptych, remember, is a three-paneled painting or a three-paneled piece. Um, there's also diptychs, which is a two-panel piece. So if you just had two pieces together, that would be called a diptych. And then when there's polytychs. Polytychs are multi-panel uh, pieces. So like the the the, the um, Ghent altarpiece, which is pretty famous uh, altarpiece in Bros in uh, uh, Belgium, is uh, a polytych, which is many panels. So I'm just making a sketch a drawing into the copper. Now, I've done this for 30 years, so uh, I I suggest that when you do it, you lightly sketch first and then press in. I went ahead and just pressed in uh, hard to begin with. But remember, I'm working on the front right now. So I'm going to flip it over onto the back. After I made my sketch on the front, I'm flip it over to the back, and now I'm going to work on pushing those things out. Okay, so I'm going to draw next to the line that I just drew. And then I'm going to use this pen that retracts. And af so after I've made that, that shape defined with, the, um, with this pen, I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to push it down. So I'm going to push from the back side. This is called repose. What I'm doing right here is uh, to push this space out. Okay. By doing that, you can kind of tell I've made this stick out more than this. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing that. But if I work on... Let me do one more, and then I'm going to talk to you about chasing. Chasing is in the other part of this process. So I've defined a space, and now I'm pushing it out. And you can also use uh, various materials. Like I use my little, I have a, a hammer that has, it's not little, it's big, but it has a really nice point on it. And ball peen hammers work well too. But you can hammer into that space to give more texture. There's various things you can do to get texture with this process. Okay, so by hammering that, you can see it gives it even more texture. Okay, so uh, as you do the repose, which is on the back side, you're going to then also work from the front. Okay, and by working from the front and pushing down from the front, you end up giving more relief. You get more relief because the optical illusion. Occur, there's an optical illusion that occurs uh, visually. So by pushing down the front, which is called chasing, I make what I pushed from the back look like it's sticking out even more. Okay, So I will keep going pushing this, and then in a minute I'll be back and I will show you how to put all of this together, put it into, um, make it a panel for your triptych. But the the tooling part is very important because the more relief change, so this is bas relief, low relief, the more relief change you have, the more interesting the piece is going to appear. So you're going to, and you can inscribe, like I press that down, I can push into that and put some line work in, and it will, you know, it, it will end up looking like it's uh, pushed further down. And like I said, don't worry about the pen marks because you'll use, um, uh, fingernail polish remover to take away the ink so that will go away okay I'll be back in a minute to show you how to put the pieces together wrapped around the form okay so I've tooled the copper on both or I've worked the copper on both sides uh, chasing on the top and repose on the back I've done it on both panels so this is the front and this will be the back okay so I have a form that I pre-cut and you have uh, these forms in your Pack it. Okay, so you're going to flip the piece over to the back side. And you're going to place the form over top. And then you're going to put your other piece over top of that. Okay, now I'm going to have to cut this a little bit. I'm going to cut it down just a bit. And don't worry because it's, it's going to get um, hidden as you fold the other piece around. Okay, so. Now I'm going to take the corners and I'm going to fold them down. The four corners fold right over the back. Kind of like origami with copper. 
And you'll see the lines line up with the form. These lines will line up with the form, okay? Now, what I do next is I'm gonna take the edges of these and fold them on themselves so that it's a softer edge, so you don't have a sharp edge pushing on to, you know, so, so you're not gonna cut, nobody's gonna cut their hands as they touch it. Now, I'll probably cut this away. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna cut this away. Again, I wanna hide as much of the sharp edge stuff as possible from the from the piece itself. So I'm gonna cut those away. And then I'm gonna fold, again, this on itself. And then I'll fold the whole thing up, depending on, let's see. away. Now I'm going to end up sewing with wire the pieces together so the the finished piece will end up looking a lot like this when it's all done. Okay, but let me just finish this real fast so you can see. So after all the uh, after all the pieces are folded, then I'm going to take a, a nail. I have it here somewhere. I can find it. I'm going to take a nail like this and a hammer, and you're going to go ahead and put nail holes in the outer edge of the copper piece. Okay, so you can kind of see that here. There's nail holes across the edge. Okay, and then I take this is uh, what is this? This is a uh, 24 gauge copper wire, very thin, very malleable, and I cut a long string of it out, and I will just take a, you can see right here, I took a little knot in the wire, and then I just sewed the wire through those holes. And what that did is it just holds the copper in place, but it also sort of gives it a smooth, uh, again, another smooth edge to deal with, okay? So that is pretty much the completed piece. All right, so it's sewed. It has um, a back and a front, and then you're going to clean it with fingernail polish. And then I have started. I'm not done yet with this, but I've started to paint with acrylic paint on top of it. Okay. Now, typically, I will use what's called patinas. Patinas are a uh, uh, oxidizer. It's an instant oxidizer for copper. Uh, but I didn't want to ship that uh, to everyone, so they uh, are, we're just going to be painting with acrylic on it. And you can go really decorative and crazy with your painting on this because that's really in the spirit of, of the Day of the Dead, is to be highly decorative, okay? So I, again, here's another example of a, how, what I've done painting-wise so far, okay? Then, when you're all done with your painting, you're going to use, I like this, this is a Rust-Oleum uh, Painter's Choice or Painter's Touch uh, clear uh, polyurethane and I will paint this on the front and the back of the, the finished panels before I sew them together okay and what this stuff will do actually is seal the copper so the copper won't oxidize anymore and it also helps seal the paint to the copper so you, you end up with a very ruggedly finished uh, strong uh, uh, finished appearance with the piece so then you're going to take the wire and cut a string of it and you'll end up sewing the two ends the two edges together. Now, ideally they would be sewed far enough apart that they could fold and become a single piece. However, that's not that realistic as far as the finished product goes. I'm more interested in the fact that the piece will sit like this. So it'll sit on its own as a freestanding sculpture sewed together, okay? So the two ends are gonna be in slightly and the whole thing will sit on its own, okay? So that's how the finished product project will appear. Uh, then after the piece is completed, you wanna make sure you take a nice photograph of it. And the best way to photograph it is to take a large piece of paper and put it at an angle up and then set the pieces on that and then take uh, your phone. You can just use your phone for it to take a picture, but I would like, and I will, I will, I will make a photograph of my finished piece and I will, I will post that into Schoology so you can uh, see how the finished 
piece should appear in a photographic form. These pieces will be submitted to the, there's a competition that the college is putting on uh, for uh, part of the Day of the Dead celebration. And so this will count in your portfolio. You'll be able to put a show down, uh, participation in a show, and even perhaps winning an award for your piece. So that's where we're at with this. I hope this is helpful. Um, then these are due. You have to have these done by October, I think it's 25th or something like that. So we still have most of the month to, to finish these up. But they're, the competition, I believe, is like on the 28th or something like that. So, all right, have fun with it. It's a, it's a really interesting process. I think you'll enjoy it. So have a great, great day. Bye.